Rotational kinetic energy. So in order to talk about rotational kinetic energy, let's look at uniform circular motion. So the motion of an object in a circle is at a constant speed. However, as the object moves, it constantly changes its acceleration as shown in the figure here. So the object is going a uni undergoing a uniform circular motion. Even though the object is moving with a constant speed, but it is accelerating because of the constant change in its direction. This uh, acceleration is always inwards. And this acceleration corresponds to a net force acting on the system that is always pointed towards the center of the circle. In general, that is called a centripetal force, or in other words, a center-seeking force. Without this inward force, an object would continue to be going in a straight line as shown here. So that if you were to cut an object while it's moving, it will continue to go in a straight line. So it, uh, a constant force is needed that is directed inwards in order to keep um, an object going around in a circular path. So now let's talk about what we, what we mean by when we say a rotation of an object. So an, an object that is rotating is basically going around and around and around. So for an object, a rigid body moves in pure rotation in f if, every if every point of the body, such as the point P, moves in a circular path. The centers of all of these circles must lie on a common straight line, which we call the axis of rotation. So take a second and look at this animation. Where do you think the axis of rotation for this particular example is? Well, yes, it is actually right in the middle here. And so the axis of rotation is about which point the object appears to rotate. So pure rotation of a rigid body can also be defined as a rigid body moves in a pure rotation if a reference line perpendicular to the axis, such as A in the figure, moves through the same angle in a given time interval as any other reference line perpendicular to the axis in the body. So this point P going around in a circle should cover the same angle no matter where it is on the um, on the circle. So the time taken to go from point P to the axis Y should be the same as the point that takes B from this point to the point, the point Y at the same angle. One more thing that's going to make rotating objects different is the rotational kinetic energy. For a solid rotating body, if we were talking about kinetic energy, which is translation, means uh, an object moving in a straight line, we will know it is half mv1 squared, half mv2 squared, half mv3 squared, and so on and so forth, if the object is composed of different um, um, small masses together. However, for a rotating body, V equals omega r, where omega is the angular velocity and r is the distance from the axis of rotation. In that case, your k, which is kinetic energy rotational, will be given by 1 half i omega squared, where i is now going to be called the moment of inertia. If you were to look at these two uh, equations carefully, you will see similarities in between them. So for example, translational and, uh, kinetic energy has a term mass in it, and rotational kinetic energy has a term inertia in it. So whatever mass, the role that mass plays for translational and inertia, um, uh, motion, moment of inertia plays for translational, uh, uh, rotational kinetic energy. Similarly, for translational motion, we have the speed v, or the velocity v. For an angular case, we have an angular velocity omega, and omega is related to v by this formula, v equals omega r. The quantity i equals summation, I, I, I goes from 1 to n, m i r i squared is called the rotational energy or the moment of inertia. So use the above expression when the number of masses that make up a body is small, or for extended bodies. So basically the idea is, if you were to be asked what the moment of inertia of any object was, 
you need to go to table 8.1 in your book, which is I'm not going to talk about here, but you need to go to table 8.1 in your book and figure out the quantity that you need to add here for moment of inertia. All of, it, all of the moment of inertias will have the term mr squared. However, the constants that they are multiplied with are going to be different depending on what type of objects is being asked for. So now let's look at this example. Find the moment of inertia of the system below. The masses are m1 and m2, and they are separated by a distance r. Assume the rod connecting the masses is massless. Okay, so now there are two masses, m1 and m2, and they are separated by a distance r. So that means from the axis of rotation, sorry, so that means from the axis of rotation, they, these uh, have a distance r1 and r2. So if I take m1 as to be 2 kilograms and m2 as 1 kilograms, r1 is taken as 0.33 meters and r2 is taken as 0.67 meters, we can calculate the moment of inertia of this system. So let's draw the picture again on the board. We have m1, we have m2, and the radius, the distance in between them is r, and the axis of rotation is given here. I believe it goes that way, sorry. I'm doing that incorrectly. So it's rotating omega, angular um, um, velocity, and so these two masses are moving in this plane. So that means from the axis of rotation, R1 will be this one and R2 will be that one. Okay, so if I was to calculate an M1 given is 2 kilograms for M1, um, 1 kilogram for M2, and R1 is given to be 0 0.33 meters, and R2 is given as 0 0.67 meters. Um, so if I was to calculate the moment of inertia, the moment of inertia will be given by the sum of all the masses and all the R's squared, right? Where the sum is over I. In this case, there are two masses, so I will be from 1 to 2. So now I will have m1 r1 squared plus m2 r2 squared. And all that's left is literally to plug in the numbers and solve for it. So in this case it will be 2 times 0 0.33 squared plus 1 times 0 0.67 squared. And if you plug it into your calculator, I get 0 0.67 kilograms meters squared for my answer so if that is uh, please make sure that that is the correct answer so that is the answer to part one so now for part B what is the moment of inertia if the axis is moved so that it passes through m1 well in that case what will happen so for part B I am going to say that the axis of rotation has moved from there to now being located here. So the omega has now changed from this way to that way, right? So this omega goes away, and now for part B, I have this as an axis of rotation. So that means that for part B, when I write down my i, which is, again, sum over 1 to 2, m i r i squared will be m1 r1 squared plus m2 r2 squared. In this case, since the axis of rotation is going through r1, I will not have any r1, but I will have r2. So this means I will have m2 and r2, which is the total length. Now, okay? So let's say if I was to consider that to be 1 meter, right, since when we split it up it's 0 0.33 plus 0 0.67, so the total R is going to be 1 meter, give or take a little bit. This is going to be 1 kilogram times 1 squared. And my moment of inertia comes out to be 1 kilogram per meter squared. See how the two answers changed? from one spot to another. This is the axis in between, and this is the axis if I was to move it towards mass one. Now on the other hand, if I was to move it 
towards this mass, what would happen? Well, in that case, this R2 will go to zero, and I will be using M1 to do the rest of my calculation. Now let's look at another example. What is the rotational inertia of a solid iron disk of mass 49 kilograms with a thickness of 5 centimeter and a radius of 20 centimeters about an axis through its center and perpendicular to it? Okay, now it's asking me for rotational inertia of a solid iron disk. So now I want you to turn to page um, eight, table 8.1 and from there find the moment of inertia of the iron disk, of a solid disk. And if you look at it carefully, it is actually equals to one half mr squared. So now what you need to do is put in your mass 49 kilograms here and your radius squared here. But note, this is in centimeters, so you may have to convert it into meters. So then the answer will be 1 half m r squared, which gives you the answer 0.98 kilograms meter squared.